Hey guys, what's up? So this is my top 20 list for JavaScript projects for 2017. There's no single source of information that you can go to to get some sort of top 20 list. A lot of people will tell you not to jump around from thing to thing, but uh, I just wanted to comprise a list of, of projects in the JavaScript community that, that I feel like are going to be relatively popular in the 2017. Um, some of these projects I, I plan to work with, some of them I don't, some I already do. Um, but these are just one person's thoughts, so if, if uh, anybody doesn't you know, respect that or want to listen to it, that's fine. I totally understand. Uh, but let me go ahead and just uh, get into this list here. So number 20, I have Angular 1. I feel like Angular it has been doomed to just become irrelevant ever since Angular 2 came out. And uh, Angular 2 has overshadowed Angular 1 for quite some time now, and I really feel like Angular 1 is not going to be a hot language or project to learn in, in 2017. Number 19 is Passport. Passport, if you're going to do any sort of authentication or authorization, especially with Node.js, then this is like your go-to project for any sort of uh, integration like that. It works very well with Express and other frameworks, and uh, definitely check that out. Number 18 is Pug. This used to be the Jade template engine, which ships with the ExpressJS framework by default for Node.js. Uh, I don't know why they changed their name from Jade to Pug, but for whatever reason they did. I haven't really cared enough to look it up, but they did change the name. Number 17, Socket.io. So if you're going to be doing any sort of uh, synchronous two-way chat communication, like any sort of uh, you know web client or chat client or anything like that, you're going to be checking out this project. You can use it with uh, with Node, um, really any Node framework out there. But um, so, and I must uh, I want to mention too that some of these technologies are not new. And it doesn't mean that they're new to 2017, but this is just my thoughts on, on what is, um, you know, what what pops out in my mind as some of the relevant stuff. Number 16 is Jasmine. So this is the, uh, for the longest time, I feel like the, uh, the the go-to JavaScript testing framework. So if you you need to, if you're just a, a indie developer, you probably want to get in the habit of how do I set up Jasmine? How do I use it to run some tests? Because when you get a job in the corporate world, you're going to be expected to test your JavaScript code and and Jasmine is one of the most tried and true testing frameworks out for the JavaScript language. So this actually has a built-in like test runner. Um, it, it can run in the browser by default and um, just, just works extremely well for testing anyway. Number 15 is Falcor, and this is going to be like the newest piece of tech that I have on this list, I believe. But this is actually a new project uh, that's being built in, in regards to how you structure your, your JSON um, your JSON data, your API. Um, so it's much more than that, but Netflix is actually actually developing it right now. And um, some people say that it could be like the next big project that we hear about a lot next year that, you know, everybody's going to be looking to try to integrate Falcor into their next project. Number 14 is Quill. I've actually talked about this recently on another video, but Quill.js is a, uh, a WYSIWYG which allows you to um, have much prettier you know, display of your, your text and your fonts and everything from within your, your blog. So a lot of people turn to like a WordPress and they download a theme. A lot of people use platforms like Medium because Medium provides this nice fluid UI. Quill offers that same type of thing, but you can just pop Quill into your Django site, your Ruby site, your Node.js site, it doesn't matter. And you'll still have you know, a really pretty fluid uh, UI. So de definitely check out that project. I feel like that is going to be a, a pretty pretty big thing moving forward. Number 13 is Vue.js. So a lot of people are talking about Vue.js and it's almost like it's taking the React type approach where when Angular 1 came along, uh, everybody, you know, once you started getting into the real heavy duty projects with Angular 1, things started to fall apart and, and that's really where like it, st it started to show its warts. With when when React came along, they basically said, "Hey, we're not trying to do everything Angular is trying to do. We're just going to do the Vue." And then here, it's almost like Vue was like, "You know what? We're even calling our name Vue." Uh, but Vue.js is a is a Vue uh, library for. It is very similar to React, but um, probably less complicated from what I've seen so far. Vue is something that I do plan on checking out, but I haven't really done much uh, work with it yet. Number 12 is uh, D3. So this isn't a new library either, but if you're going to be using like uh, flow charts, bar graphs, anything like that, then D3 allows you to have um, a lot of it. It allows you to express your data in, in some very creative and, and, and 
very complex ways. So there's, as far as I know, there's no successor and there's no alternative to, to what D3 is doing and has been doing for several years now. Number 11 is 3JS. So 3, um, unfortunately, you know, I've been wanting this project to really take off, but I just don't see a whole lot of going on with WebGL. But if you're going to talk about WebGL, then you have to talk about 3JS. So uh, if, for anybody that doesn't know, WebGL is basically the OpenGL graphic specification that was um, introduced into the browser so that you could do 3D complex 3D gaming and things like that within the browser. It's a very complicated process, and it's something that has taken a long time to catch on. And uh, 3JS is probably the most influential project in that open source standard of trying to provide better tools to work with WebGL. Number 10 is Mocha. This is actually another testing framework that everybody seems to be turning to recently. Um, they're, they're kind of moving away from Jasmine and moving towards Mocha. And a lot of the reasons for that is because Mocha doesn't try to do everything that Jasmine does. And a lot of people like that. Um, and I've talked about this in videos as well, when you have too much boilerplate versus too much magic. And for people that say, um, ja you know, people would say Jasmine has too much magic and Mocha, um, just slightly more boilerplate, less going on underneath the covers and much more customizable. So um, there's all kinds of stuff, including like an assertion library that comes included with PhantomJS. Mocha doesn't have a, an assertion library. Uh, they expect you to use this uh, chai.js, or they don't expect you to use anything. You can use whatever you want, and that's some of the, the benefits of Mocha, but most people use chai.js to do their test assertions. But you can heavily customize it, and you, you see Mocha popping up all over the place as people's um, default testing framework. Number nine is Angular 2. A lot of people would probably expect this to, have, to be a little bit higher on my list. And, uh, and I really feel like, you know, with the whole TypeScript thing versus Babel, that I'm not really sure that Angular 2 is going to blow up. Um, I do think it's going to be relatively popular, but I'm not sure that everybody's jumping on the Angular 2 bandwagon right this second just based on the fact that, you know, what happened the first go around. So um, to date, I haven't seen any overly impressive apps with, with Angular, and I really feel like, uh, Angular 2 kind of reinvented itself because of what React was doing and, um, and felt intimidated probably by Facebook's React project and then decided to do a complete rewrite. So since that time, and it's been years now, I just I feel very uneasy about Angular. Number eight is uh, Moment.js, and this is also not a new library, but anytime you're going to be dealing with time, dates, and everything like that, uh, Moment.js is the best framework out there for that type of stuff. So I, I can't think of anything better than that. Number seven is Redux, and uh, and Redux is is gaining a lot of traction now. Most people associate Redux with React, but Redux can actually be used for all kinds of different frameworks. It doesn't have to be used with just uh, React, but React with Redux is becoming a pretty popular option for a lot of web developers out there in the JavaScript community, and I, I expect that to continue into 2017. Number six is MongoDB, not really a JavaScript uh, you know, language in of itself, but as far as you know, the whole mean stack, which is, is MongoDB and Angular or, you know, Express, or Express, and you can use Angular or React or Vue, but MongoDB is, um, is it's a NoSQL database and uh, it's all about you know, storing JSON documents in a, in a web server, so, or a web database server. And MongoDB is like hand in hand with a lot of Node.js frameworks, so, if you look at a, a web framework like Meteor.js, uh, last time I checked, they only worked with MongoDB. So I mentioned it here as definitely something that people have to understand in the JavaScript community is going to be relatively important. Number five is the Express.js framework. I actually created my own framework just kind of messing around and trying to learn Node.js myself. Uh, I called it Base.js, but really it pales in comparison to what Express does. Um, you know, as I started building my own framework, I just kind of started realizing that I was building a lot of what Express does. And Express is a relatively minimalistic framework. It, it compares more to something like Python Flask as opposed to Python Django. Um, it doesn't try to do everything for you. Um, you can plug and play all kinds of different things like template engines, databases, things like that. And um, it's just, it's really the go-to framework, web framework for any sort of Node.js application. Number four is Webpack. Webpack is uh, is extremely popular. We've heard so much about Browserify and Bower, uh, all these different things like Gulp, 
lot of people are using Gulp with Browserify or CommonJS to to load modules and things like that. But um, everybody seems to be turning to Webpack when it comes to just setting up a config and getting Webpack to do all the complex uh, module loading and and uh, and bundling that we need for our JavaScript applications. So definitely Webpack is is uh, is a must learn in 2017. Number three is Babel, and I put Babel on here because it's really the alternative to using something like TypeScript. And I think Babel is going to end up winning out um, over TypeScript, but I'm not 100% sure about that, actually. I, in fact, I just kind of said that, and as I'm saying it, I actually don't, I have no confidence in saying that. I think it's it's like a 50-50 race between Babel and TypeScript of what people are going to end up choosing in the long run. I think if I had to do a slight advantage, it would be to Babel. Um, because TypeScript is just you know quite a bit different than than what you know people you know just actually writing JavaScript are doing. So, um, I, but I, I definitely don't. I, I think that that Angular two in TypeScript is going to be uh, a pretty big option as well. But TypeScript isn't JavaScript, and uh, I didn't include that in this list. So, Babel is uh, is definitely though I, I think a must learn in twenty seventeen. Number two is React, and uh, and React is you know obviously everybody's heard of React, been around for several years now, but it's more popular now than it ever was, and I think a lot of that has to do with uh, a lot of people being burned on the whole Angular thing. They they get into the Angular and they realize that um, their their framework becomes unwieldy. They don't understand what the hell's going on. Angular has a lot of different like branded topics and 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 names and things like that, and. Um, and people just didn't like all the complexity, and they, they, you know, I think a lot of people realize that that we're headed towards this web component-based system of, uh, you know, as the web grows and expands, and and React so far does that better than anybody. So when it comes to like a web component with a exposable API, then I think React definitely does the best job there. Now, number one is probably going to shock you guys, but it's jQuery. The reason why it's jQuery is because jQuery is still used all over the freaking place. Um, a lot of the, the samples of how do I accomplish this or that, it's all jQuery on uh, Stack Overflow and things like that. And and to be honest, it's 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 a relatively large library, but guys, this is really, really important even still. So it's not going to go anywhere anytime in 2017. Um, I expect it to continue to be a widely used library for a lot of your, your DOM manipulation. And, um, and if you're like me, I'll use jQuery with React or with Angular or whatever I'm using. Um, I have no problems using jQuery. It's, it makes life a lot easier as a web developer, and it has for quite some time. And uh, I really feel like if I, if there was one JavaScript language or framework that I had to use in 2017 versus all these other ones, I would choose jQuery because I could actually make a complex, fluid UI using something with just like Django or Flask with jQuery making Ajax calls to my backend API, and I could still make it fluid and nice. I don't need to have any one of these frameworks uh, if I have jQuery. So anyway, that, that's my thoughts, guys. Let me know what you think. Um, please leave comments in the description tabs. Hey, guys, so a lot of you ask me, how do I get my foot in the door to become a programmer? And I just want to take a moment to mention Dev Mountain Coding Bootcamp is a 12-week intensive course that focuses on the technologies of the here and now for web development. Uh, some of the things that they're actually teaching in this 12-week course, it's geared to get you into the, the industry by focusing on things like jQuery, Node.js, React, Angular, how to use GitHub. So a lot of the things that you're going to need to do as a developer, as soon as you start, they're going to be teaching you in this in this coding boot camp. And the entire goal is to be able to get you into the industry within 12 weeks. So if you guys are interested in learning more information about Dev Mountain Coding Boot Camp, just check out the link in the description tab of this video. Thank you for watching, and have a good day.